<lacht> ich finde, das ist ja eher ein Kompliment. Ja. Hm? Deutlich entspannter. Freunde, die in Paris studiert haben, die haben immer gemeint, wenn du irgendwo angeladen bist und du kommst nicht mindestens eine halbe Stunde, ich bin zu spät, ist das unmöglich. Dear ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. You're getting quiet. It's time to start uh, with our first thematic plenary. Uh, first of all, uh, I want to welcome you here uh, in this plenary and on this conference in Kehl and in Strasbourg. Uh, I'm pleased to welcome you here at our first thematic plenary called Regions at Work, Benefits of Inspire Implementation for Territorial Management, Environment and E-Government. Before we come to our plenary speakers, uh, I will have a short introduction. After that, we're going to listen to their presentations, and in the end, we'll have a plenary discussion. That's the storyboard for the next 90 minutes. Let's come to my little, really small introduction. I'm pleased to see, here, see you here on the 11th conference, a conference which takes place year after year without losing relevance for an intensive exchange of knowledge and experience. It is not only, in my eyes, the most important European meeting about the implementation of INSPIRE, but also about the use of geo-information technology in the context of open data, e-government, and in our growing digital world. Every year here at the INSPIRE conference, we have another chapter of lessons learned. And I think this is really important because you cannot just understand, inspire, and then go home. It is important step by step to observe what we do and improve the process, not only of implementing inspire, furthermore of using the inspire infrastructure. It is important in my eyes, step by step, to observe what we do uh, sorry, uh, to be uh, aware of new technical and also political changes and adjust our goals, our strategy and our measurements. It is important, and I think that is very crucial, to define critical areas where we might have significant problems to solve. Only when we solve those problems, we will have a progress. Not only the last issue has to be considered when we look at the so-called regions, and that's what we're going to talk about in the next 90 minutes. What are regions? Regions can be quite big, like states in Spain, for instance, or also in Germany, like Baden-Württemberg, who's supporting this conference, is a big region. It is a federal state. They can also be quite small, like city areas, like municipal areas, like Strasbourg, or like islands. We have a guest from the Osoris here as well. Uh, they can also be cultural, like, like language areas, or they can be just administrative, like <laughs> counties. They can be defined by geographical borders, like a management area of a river basin. We will have one contribution today from one of these examples of regions. And some of them, maybe most of them, are inside our member state borders, and some of them are cross-border areas. I think these are very good examples to learn when we implement INSPIRE. We are not here to get the final view about all these regions in Europe. We are, learn, we are more or less learning how they are dealing with the implementation of INSPIRE. This is really important for us, and it is significant for the implementation of INSPIRE. This is an important lesson for all of us here, for all the participants coming from different regions, but also from the member states where we have the, reasons, uh, the regions, and for sure also for the EU, EU body. Inside the regions, we all know that, and we discussed that over the last years, we have the, a huge amount of spatial data and information, maybe the biggest part of it. If we want to integrate this significant part of spatial information, we need to understand the typical issues on this territorial level. What are the main burdens? 
Is it missing budgets because the budgets are smaller in these regions? Is it a missing technical knowledge about the complexity of INSPIRE rules? Is it a lack of motivation, motivation doing some kind of word for a higher level? Or is it also a language problem because INSPIRE mainly is in English? The other side is what are or the other questions, what are the main benefits for the regions contributing to the European level as part of our political and administrative responsibility? Or using the INSPIRE approach, the services and the INSPIRE data for their own administrative tasks? These are all questions. And one big question is what are the regions expecting actually from INSPIRE after dealing 10 years of implementation? These are many, many questions for all of you. <laughs> we wait for answers, but I think uh, we won't be able to answer uh, all these questions in this plenar plenary. But I guess we will have a deeper understanding, and that is the goal of the essential level, of one of the essential level inside the European Union, the regions. I will stop at this point. I hope you're a bit hungry now for our contributions. I will stop uh, at this point with my short introduction and turn your attention now towards our plenary speakers. As I said, each one of them will have a short contribution of like 10, 15 minutes. Uh, first, uh, we start with Luc Swank. Luc Swank from Luxembourg. Uh, he is an environmental scientist being specialized in water. He is not here just as a representative in Luxembourg, where he works as an associated director of the water authorities. He is, first of all, here as the president of the International Commission for the, region, uh, for the Protection of the Rivers Mosul and Saar. In other words, a representative of a region with geographical borders and its cross-border as well. So, very interesting. Second, we have Margarita Caletrio Arcos from Spain, but mainly here uh, in her role as a representative from the region of Valencia, She's an engineer, being familiar with SDI components like meter data and catalogs. She works at the Regional Cartographic Institute of Valencia. Third, we have Hilma von, Lo von Lojewski. It's nice for me to have a German name. Uh, he is an elected councillor for urban development, building, housing and transport for the German Association of Cities and also for the German uh, Association of uh, North Rhine-Westphalia. Looking at his CV, which is printed out uh, on the internet, or you can read it in the internet, you can see he's a real expert of urban and city affairs in Germany, also with an international background. Fourth, we have Anna Moreira. Good, I see her smiling, it was fine. Uh, she is involved uh, in the directive implement, in the INSPIRE directive implementation in the Azores for many years. So we have a kind of geography lesson today as well. So uh, um, the Azores, they belong to Portugal and they are part of the INSPIRE implementation. She now works at the department of the regional government of the Azores that has the coordination. She is a biologist and a city planner as well. Thanks for coming here from far away to Central Europe. We have also Mario Quetano from Portugal. He is a principal investigator and the deputy director general of the territorial De development. He is also an associate professor and an author of many publications. I think we all know Mario uh, as a really good expert from Inspire and SDI. Thanks for coming. And our last speaker will be Mr. Fabrice Fung. He is coming from the Ministry of Ecological and Solidarity Transition in Britannia. Not Britain, Britannia in France. Uh, he presents the Geo Britannia, a regional Inspire community. He is a co founder of a free software community, the Chi Orchestra, and Inspire Spatial Data Infrastructure. So I leave the floor now to you. Thanks a lot for coming and contributing. Uh, Luc, you're the first one. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you to the organizers uh, 
that invited me for having the possibility to do this presentation and also present um, the International Commission for the Production and the for, of the, for the Moselle and the Saar rivers. As it has been said, I'm also a deputy director of the Water Management Agency in Luxembourg, and uh, I am here also to be, I can also say I'm a little bit proud of my agency because on the national level we are the that agency that provided the most, for the current moment, the most data on the geo uh, portal platform of uh, Luxembourg, going from water quality data to flood, flood maps and water protection zones and whatever uh, <coughs> there is in, in the water domain. So that may be just for, the, for, for my background. Um, going further to the next slide. It comes. So, uh, as it has been said, the uh, Moselle and the Saar River are cross-border rivers. Uh, they are uh, coming from, they are covering Luxembourgish territory, but also German, French, and also a very small part of the Belgian region of uh, Wallonia. Uh, it covers about 28, it, uh, it's, it, uh, the Moselle uh, is, uh, comes from the Vosges in, in, French, in France. Uh, the Saarschleife is another uh, point that, that, you can, uh, that you know. And um, on the, this whole territory of around 28,000 square kilometers, which is 10 times the size of Luxembourg, uh, it, uh, uh, they're living... Uh, 4.3 million inhabitants. So, and water does no, not know any borders. Water pollution does not know any borders. Floods don't know any borders. So why should we? And that's where uh, there is an important need for the international uh, cooperation on these types of uh, uh, tributary systems. Uh, the, the Commission, as such, uh, functions as, as an organization uh, which all the, where all the member states are participating financially and also uh, with their own experts. Uh, the presidency changes on the basis of two years and uh, it is supported by a secretariat which is, in this case, situated in Konz in Germany. And what are now the major uh, primary roles of the, the Commission? It has to promote the international transboundary cooperation between the member states, meaning Germany, France, Luxembourg, uh, and the Belgian region of Wallonie. It is a coordination platform for the implementation of different European directives in the water uh, um, field namely the Water Framework Directive, the Floods Directive, the Marine Strategy Framework, even though uh, the Moselle is not running directly into the sea, but also at the end uh, it is connected to the, the Rhine River, which then goes into the North Sea. So also we uh, have our obligations in that uh, directive. So, um, and the, the, the Commission has its role uh, in coordinating different efforts in evaluating uh, the, the status of the quality of the, of the river uh, and includes joint targets and measures uh, for the states concerning the different areas of uh, flood prevention or technical flood prevention in the flood directive. Uh, what are the main issues and challenges? The reduction of the common types of pollution the enhancement of restoration of the ecological continuity and the reduction and elimination of polluting and, and uh, possibly dangerous substances. And as you see, for all of these uh, sectors, we need data, we need lots of data, uh, and it is important that these data are harmonized because the water, it cannot be, it has a good quality in the French part of the Moselle and then just crossing the border to Luxembourg and it's evaluated differently. So uh, there is a, a really 
big importance to have not only to collect the data but to harmonize them in order to get better products. How uh, is that uh, realized? So we are, based, we are basing our data work on the, the common implementation strategy of the Water Framework Directive, which gives a lot of, uh, of criteria for metadata and uh, quality assurance of, of the collection and, and treatment of data. Uh, so that's also uh, completely compatible with the INSPIRE approach. Um, but um, I can, uh, if I go further, what with the example what we've seen uh, when we were working in, in order to get the reporting done for the floods directive. Uh, we had a lot of uh, geometric data, topography data, what, river water, um, river stretches that had to be harmonized in order to get a, a full view of the, the water network if, of, the whole, of the whole region. So in the first reporting for the water framework directive, this did not really play a, a big role because uh, at the higher scale you did not see any problems. But once you were starting to focus in, which you had to do for the flood directive in order to have technical measures at a local or regional level, it started to show that uh, the borders were not covering, that the uh, river stretches were not connected when you went cross-border. So there were a lot of uh, uh, inhomogenic uh, data sets that had to be put uh, together. Um, so, and what, what, did we, what did we do? We had created cross-border data sets <laughs> for the water basins and the tributary, uh, for the water bodies and the tributary basins. Uh, and as in, in the, the commission here did the coordination, in this case, for the data sets of France, Luxembourg, and Germany. We had a former uh, map, which overall and the larger scale looks very nice. But if you zoom in, you can see, uh, for example, that uh, the river stretch here, when you overlay the two maps from two countries, they were not covering exactly in the same way. So the border was not on the same spot and the river was not on the same spot. So it was really important to really zoom in and have a, a close look on, on what is happening in order to get an, uh, an harmonized product out of it. So we have now a complete harmonized uh, map of the, all the tributary rivers in the, in the whole uh, region, so the whole 28,000 square kilometers has now a coherent water network, uh, which is quite uh, an important task to have, and which is a really nice product that came out of, of uh, this work. Perhaps another just small um, information, the Moselle at the German and Luxembourgish uh, border is a so-called condominium. So it means that the territory of Luxembourg covers the whole Moselle River as well as Germany. So the German and Luxembourgish territories are overlapping on that uh, same over the, the Moselle. So we are both responsible for the entire stretch of this Moselle. So it is all the most important that we work with the same maps when we want to do something uh, in flood protection, but also in quality control. So what do we need uh, as, a, as a region, as a cross-border region, when, and in our field of work, uh, we definitely need a stronger and better governments at the EU and international and national level um, be and between the different competent organizations. Just to mention that the, the, the Commission for the Protection of the Moselle and the, uh, the SAR, although doing this work and this integration of, of, uh, of data, we are not able to report it as such to the European Commission because we are not a reporting body reporting is, is left over to the member states. So if, it, if they have to report the, the water network, they have again to split it up into three national data sets with all the risks of uh, introducing new errors uh, that this includes. Uh, so we also have to uh, review the permanently the, the relevant reporting and doing an assessment of the costs and benefits of the reporting obligations because all these techniques and all these harmonization efforts are not without a cost, and we would really 
use it in a way that we can use it for uh, as much reporting obligations as possible, not having to uh, redo uh, the work for the nitrates directive in the same way that we have it done it for the water framework directive, which basically uh, works with the same uh, sampling stations. And what can a region as the commission, as our commission do for the, in, in the context of INSPIRE, we already do coordination work at cross-border cooperation between um, multiple countries. We have experience in creating uh, cross-border data sets for the catchments of the Moselle and the Saar. And we are, uh, uh, we are happy to share this information with anyone who wants to use it. And uh, are happy if our work that has been done has not been done just for uh, our own sake, but if it ha has uh, uh, also an, uh, a further purpose. So it is also then important that at one stage the reporting schemes and obligations of the in, at the Commission level, at EU level, would be some way harmonized and uh, that there is some sort of a certainty from one reporting cycle to another within one directive, but also in between different directives. Uh, so if uh, I hope that I could give you a short overview on the work that is done in, in our commissions and, and in how far we are concerned with uh, geo-reference data, with spatial data, and therefore also with the INSPIRE directive. If you want to have a look at our website, uh, where the address is, is marked above, you can see in our geo-explorer the different types of, of data that we are providing. It's quality data, but it's also uh, uh, quantitative data on the, the river flows. If you are, for example, clicking on one of the river gorging stations, you get directly linked to the national portal uh, of this uh, gorging station showing the, the, the trend of the, the, the flows and, and water heights at that station together with a, a preview, a calculated uh, preview of the evolution of that gorging station for the coming 24 four hours. So also in that uh, frame we are doing uh, uh, work in, in, in con interconnecting national uh, geo portals with our own uh, portal. So, and uh, I can only thank you for your attention and a big, big thank you goes also out to the Secretariat of the, of the Commission uh, who helped me in the preparation of this, uh, of this presentation and also to uh, Armin Müller for giving me the, uh, all the input that uh, was needed to give this presentation. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you very much, Luke. Yeah, this microphone works as well. Um, I think that was a clear view on your expectations of the Inspired Directive, focusing on uh, reporting issues. <laughs> now we're coming from a geographical region to, uh, I would say, admi administrative uh, region in Spain. So it's you. Thank you. The power. No, I'm coming. Okay. Bonjour. Thanks to the beautiful city of Strasbourg for hosting this Congress. A special thanks to the Congress organizers for making this meeting possible, for like-minded people who work on this wonderful project of the European Territorial Data Unification. We really appreciate you giving us the opportunity to, give, to share our local and regional experience in the SPAR implementation and its effects in government. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. I'm going to summarize our experience as a regional node coordinated by the Institute Cartographic Valencia, the public regional cartographic institute in the Comunidad Valenciana, Spain. Our main tasks are to carry out the territorial projects relating with cartographic, photogrammetric, geodesic, and topographical development, to coordinate the georeference information of e-government development in our community, and to be the organization responsible for inspired implementation on our regional level. The relationship between our regional node and the central node 
is that we collaborate back and forth in different projects. Relating to INSPIRE, the Spanish Central Node advises and defines the implementation guideline in the Spanish territory. It develops a training program and coordinates the Spanish national work groups for INSPIRE implementation. The regional nodes is the creator and provider of INSPIRE in regional spatial data and services that are reported to the Central Node. Currently, we report geographical names, protected sites, and transport network data set. And in the near future, we are going to report uh, information related with Annex 2 and Annex 3. We also participate in the national groups. The regional node offers to the local nodes the theoretical and technological support to manage the information by providing web, catalog, and downloading services. Most of the 542 local governments collaborate in the data compilation relating with geographical names, network transport, border lines, and natural sites, and survey and local infrastructure and equipment. So, what are the benefits of INSPIRE implementation? INSPIRE implementation has and currently provides us with guidelines, knowledge, possibilities, unity, reliability, reductions, and e-government development. Let's review them one by one. Unity. Because an SDI community exists that is growing and sharing its experiences. The collaboration established between organizations has no precedence. An example of our experience is that we have obtained an urban and interurban transport network unifying the information of five different regional uh, organisms. Another example is the collaboration with the Valencian Language Academy that helped us to reach 123,000 geographical names obtained in our, in our two official languages. Related with data set, we are obtaining organized and normalized databases, eliminating duplicated information. In this context, our biggest project is that we are creating the Valencian Government Corporative Dataset, unifying datasets and technological resources. Unity because thanks to the interoperability, we speak the same language and serve the same goals that unite us in tool and software development. The implementation is associated with an increase of knowledge. More information is available. Before Inspire, much information wasn't public nor served, and currently most of it is public and downloaded for free. We have discovered information owners, and we continue with our searching campaign and inventory. As technicians involved in Inspire implementation, we have the opportunity to enjoy the continuous learning process necessary to achieve the objectives. For example, to adjust and update our dataset models to inspire dataset models. To foment the SDI use, we encourage that the university and schools use the SDI. In fact, it's used for exams and we receive visits from students. Thanks to the guidelines of the INSPIRE Directive and its implementing rules, our SDI has had a reference to be guided by. Our metadata follow the Spanish metadata core that, of course, complies with INSPIRE. INSPIRE implementation has also provided us with possibilities. The centralized responsibilities in the cases that the publication of regional public databases are centralized in the SDI, makes the producer's data be focused on just obtaining and maintaining their data. The SDI permits an easy associated information diffusion. For example, further information of the thematic legend of the environmental services is included as PDF is in their metadata. 
With Inspire uh, implementation, a huge reduction occurs. The SDI use happens in working hours. Duplicated projects with different developers have been stopped. And it's evident that free download reports benefits an important range of professionals. SDI is the meeting site to obtain reliable information. Many government agencies, local governments, universities, public and private resources managers, territory business, and citizens in general are using our SDI for understanding, analyzing, and planning the territory. To access the service provider ensures the data vericity and upgrade, for example, with cadastral service. Inspire implementation is fundamental for e-government development because it provides the officiality that an information searcher is looking for, the ease to obtain concrete applications derived from its core and based on its services, the improvement on, of efficiency in the provision of geographic information, the collaboration in paper reduction in administrative files, the existence of the data in the SDI is accepted as true. No further certification is required. This occurs regarding historical aerial photos and orthophotos. Inspire implementation provides also to e-government opening, transparency. In our case, the official government open data web in the geographical information runs throughout the SDI catalog and power. Power because the SDI offers a global vision of all the variables related with one place. So, the act of contrasting so many rigorous and updated items of information gives to our new modern public administration an unprecedented power to analyze and deal with, the ter with territorial information and consequently to make wise decisions. We continue removing barriers to achieve the objectives of the experience obtained and being aware of the magnitude of the global project and the large amount of work that we have to develop. Our future goals are relating with obtaining simplicity in our daily task, developing tools. Simplicity in the way we communicate the project and in the way we relate with future data providers. It's fundamental to make easier the process, especially to the local nodes. New creative vision is needed to boost collaborations to achieve an effective public partnership and to meet deadlines. Increasing resources. Make the unification of projects dynamic by reusing data and expanding coordination. We are waiting for more concrete legislation and political priorities definition to help us. Provide, provide more training programs with more visually attractive information of different content levels are fundamental to split the project. An expansion in content speed and users. A special attention is going to be made to social network to enlarge the SDI community. In conclusion, thanks to the guidelines provided by Inspire that have opened a multipath of knowledge and possibilities, we have obtained the unity, reliability, and reductions needed to develop a better territorial data management fundamental in any country's development and necessary for e-government. We'll keep on working with enthusiasts and open-minded to achieve the new goals of this European project expansive outside Europe. It's certain that the coordination between people the data sharing and the will of protecting our environment is going to report contents indisputable good results. We hope 
that the collaboration between regional and local nodes will increase, working together and sharing common platforms, tools, advances, and specific projects. Thanks for the big effort that we all are making that is providing very good results and that will be even better in the future. And just to finish, I would like to invite you to visit our region and, of course, our headquarters. Thank you very much and have a nice day. Thank you, Margarita. I think uh, that was a nice feedback uh, for Inspire, but also some clear expectations. So thank you very much. Uh, the next uh, speech will be done by Hilma from Lojewski, a few from the municipality or from the urban level. Thank you, Mr. Moderator, dear colleagues, attendants. Thank you very much also for going beyond the region and inviting the local level. That is something very natural in Germany. Uh, implementing Inspire and dealing with the geodata infrastructure is a multi-layer issue. And the fact that the Ministry of Interior in uh, Germany, the Federal Ministry of Interior, invited us from the German Association of Cities to this conference already indicates that this is uh, always and permanently a multi-layer issue. I'd like to explore on this a little bit further, but would also like to extend my gratitude to the colleagues in the Ministry of Interior and to the organizers of the conference here. Um, I've been um, to one of the conferences a couple of years ago, and I'm not in the business. You're all much more uh, into the... Uh, organization set up and implementation of Inspire and the geodata infrastructure as I am. I'm rather in, um, from a political and technocratic point of view, a kind of um, uh, observer of the scene. And therefore, I press the red button here, is that right? Uh, and therefore, um, uh, some of the use, uh, views might differ from yours. Um, this is technically not really logical. The, okay, the green button. I got it. Thanks. Um, you need to be aware uh, when we talk about a multi-layer um, approach in implementing Inspire in Germany that we have 17 laws on implementing Inspire, that is a hassle. Uh, that is one of the disadvantages of a federal system. But I've already noted the advantage, that is a multi-layer approach. Um, yes, indeed, we face some problems with that. Also, uh, by the fact that, for example, the colleagues from the European Commission regard the implementation in some of our states uh, more positive than we do, and vice versa. In some of the states, we regard it more positive as uh, the Commission does. So it's a matter of interpretation of the different laws. Let me not got, uh, get into this uh, into too much detail. It's a matter of fact. We have to deal with it, and we can't change it. We uh, try to fill the contents, uh, the, the, the framework with contents. Um, but we also have to deal with different perceptions on Inspire. Um, in view of the politicians, we have to answer questions like, what is it about? Does it help me in decision making? And we were so frank, uh, or so blunt, I need to say, to simply use a term of the political scientists and call it geo-governance. There is a branch in political science which deals with geo-governance. We simply hijacked this term and tried to transfer it to our decision makers and said, if you need, if you apply Inspire plus uh, uh, geodata infrastructure, you deal with geo-governance. And that makes it much more sexier than Inspire or any other technical term. Yes, uh, we are aware that is hijacking a term which is already well introduced, but geo-governance might be something which makes it more clear what Inspire and geodata infrastructure serves for. 
it's too expensive. Uh, does it have an effect on the local authorities? And um, uh, it's always a task to clarify on the effect uh, for the local um, uh, authorities. And um, as you see in the graph, um, it is um, an approach which somehow needs to channel manifold inputs from very different sides. Um, as a representative of the local level, finances always um, play a vital role. And uh, we have in Germany a um, principle which is called concomitance, or to put it more simple, the one who orders pays the bill. Uh, well, um, the states claim that they haven't ordered it. They simply comply with EU and federal law. So the local level usually has to pay the bill. It's probably not about the finances, it's rather about the support structure which is established at federal and state level to interact in between federal, state, regional and local level. And this is why, for example, at the state level, and my counterpart from the Ministry of Interior in North Rhine-Westphalia is also in the audience, we strive to establish a platform for better interaction between the different levels because the tasks for the local levels are um, exorbitant um, and uh, even prevents us from normal geodetic work at the local level. It's a lot of interaction required uh, and this requires certainly a higher level on the concomitants, as we say, and more financial inputs by all levels, and I do not want to include, uh, exclude the local level um, in this regard. Uh, fourth remark on the general framework, um, we have um, a kind of holistic um, engagement of the uh, municipal umbrella associations, that is the association of counties, that is the association of cities, mine, and the associations and of towns and communities. And by this, we cover the whole area in Germany and 82 million population. And that works pretty nicely. As that is, again, the advantage of a federal uh, approach. And you see it here in a little bit complicated graph. Um, the local level is closely interlinked with the federal level. The steering committee of the German data infrastructure is not only steered by the federal level, but by the states and the local level either way. That is something which might form the strength of the German data infrastructure and the implementation of Inspire from my point of view. Let's briefly look at the impacts. Uh, is Inspire a driver for the local authorities GDI and uh, as you see thumbs up yes we believe so and I'd just like to reduce um, this positive perception to one fact the structures are now firmly established I don't look now into the data you'll get the presentation later on and can look into that and uh, uh, there is some proof for that there's some proof for this um, um, that inspire serves as a driver for the local authorities GDIs. Um, there is a significant increase in the number of parameters and 62% um, of uh, the local authorities, um, uh, or no, it is 62% of the data which comes from the local authorities which is incorporated in the data sets. And that is, from my point of view, a good indicator. Another one is that the cities and districts uh, for about 75% have um, um, uh, established or, and uh, use the system uh, actively. We have a certain weakness in the towns and communities and this is something we have to cope with because we need a stronger interaction between the towns and communities and regional support uh, to bring this rather low number of 6.3%, which you see here, forward. Third impact, inspire as an additional burden for local authorities, GDIs. Yes, we believe so, thumbs down, it is a burden. And uh, personal and financially wise, we cannot fully cope with it. Um, 
Data use is often not documented. Um, users rely on already existing regional data and services are, uh, offered. The complexity of the Inspire network is hard to cope with for smaller towns and communities. That means um, there is only one solution that is uh, joint interaction between the towns, support from bigger cities to the surrounding towns, regional and regional support in order to uh, comply with the technical and administrative requirements. Um, fourth impact, geo-governance, and I've um, already referred to this term, can be, needs to be uh, a part of administrative modernization. And we believe it is uh, a great chance um, to bring uh, the Inspire idea and the geodata infrastructure into the political space or into the political thinking through, through this term. Um, we uh, witness in a higher level, um, a more sophisticated level of um, establishment of spatial information in the municipal area, um, we see that interaction between the bodies in a municipality, but also in between municipalities and municipalities and the region functions by far better. Um, we see that spatial information in times of open government and open data is a prerequisite in the digitization of um, life, to put it very simple, not to use the term smart cities or smart regions, which I do not like that much. And um, um, in, the, in the whole sphere of um, the mega issues, energy, broadband, demographics, integration, specifically in Germany, integration of the refugees, we have seen that geo-governance plays a vital role. And um, another uh, impact, and that is uh, very obvious also in these days, um, uh, geo-governance plays also a vital role in, uh, well, prevention or at least coping with uh, catastrophes, consolidation of the data set, thief mapping, generation of new information and analysis, and the derivation of prevention and adaptation measures in view of climate change is something which is in the mindset of political decision makers meanwhile. Um, another one, um, the uh, geo-governance, uh, where geo-governance plays a role for administrative modernization um, it is something which politicians started to love, to visualize uh, the preparation and visualization um, of uh, decisions, to prepare for these de decisions. And um, um, one term which I keep telling our colleagues at the local level in the departments for geodetics um, is uh, go, go, uh, politically, try to transfer your message in a political term and make it adaptive to political decision making. I, I believe in the last five years we have gone a good way towards uh, this uh, direction. And as a spatial planner myself, um, it is very obvious um, that um, municipal spatial data is the basis for integrated urban development. We cannot live without it, uh, in, not in technical terms, not in socioeconomic terms, not in demographic terms, infrastructure, traffic, and so on and so forth. Pooling this and deriving what we need is the essential for integrated urban development and is also the es essential to bring life to the Leipzig Charter for Integrated Urban Development in Europe. Um, finally, sixth impact, spatial data information and municipal value is added. And you see the different fields where we see these addings in the knowledge management, management information, and so on and so forth. But no doubt at all, there's still a whole load of room for improvement, and this can be only achieved by regarding also Inspire and the geodetic infrastructure as a process. And if we look finally at the different needs which we see for action 
at the different levels. We have requirements at the EU level. Uh, for example, um, to inquire further um, about the process as such, to uh, enhance the information on the availability of EU-wide data sets or maybe other strategies. Our national strategy needs further improvement in monitoring and comparability. It needs further integration of geo information and federal information management. The state GDIs um, are differing a lot due to the different GD, uh, due to the different inspire laws in the states in Germany, which <coughs> I have explored on a little bit earlier. Um, we need to improve the communication at the state level. We need to record and provide regionally available spatial data to this end. Uh, define uniform standards. We need to provide stronger bundling of the specialist knowledge and services from municipal GDIs and not to exempt the municipal level. We need simply the decision makers to cater for the personnel and the funds of their respective departments. And that is not an easy task. And this is why I'm, and I keep saying, and I'd like to repeat it, this is why I believe that GDI needs to go, go uh, politics. They need to formulate their results and their demands to the decision makers in political terms and also need to play the political card uh, in terms of relevance for decision preparation, decision making and uh, monitoring and evaluation. Uh, technically, yes, we need to further develop comprehensive data sets. Um, we need to update the municipal guidelines, integrate spatial data, review mandate, uh, the temporary mandating of the states with regard to INSPIRE and expand municipal GDI in view of the social issues, whether it be mega issues or regular issues. Um, I leave it to the decision of the cities themselves. Um, but we need to demonstrate that no spatially relevant, no economically relevant, no socially relevant uh, decision can be taken without the framework of INSPIRE and the application of uh, a profound uh, geodatic infrastructure. Well, I leave the question to you. Is INSPIRE still at amber or are we changing to green? Um, and uh, I wish a fruitful discussion on this and uh, hope that our experience in Germany with a multi-layer <coughs> approach and the close interaction between national, state, regional and local bodies might serve as an example elsewhere. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Hilma. I think uh, that was a very deep and a very balanced view, actually, on burdens and benefits from uh, municipal level, uh, especially in the context of uh, a federated state like Germany. So, thank you. We have to pass over, uh, and we want to pass over to Anna Moreira and Mario Quetano, uh, who are talking about the Azores and uh, the regional aspects in Portugal. We're changing format now, so that might wake you up as well. Um, we are now uh, having two speakers. They're sharing the presentation, and you can move your neck a little bit to the right. Okay. Uh, bonjour. Bonjour à tous. Good morning, uh, everyone. My name is Mario. Um, I'm from the Central Administration in Portugal, and I will share the presentation with Anna from the uh, regional government of Azores. Um, and the main topic of our presentation will be the implementation, the, 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 the main topic of the discussion will be the implementation or the successful implementation of INSPIRE in the Azores Islands. The Azores Islands are, they are nine islands. They are in the middle of the Atlantic, uh, in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. Um, around 250,000 people live in the islands and they are quite far away from the mainland in Portugal. They are 1,600 kilometers away. Um, let me tell you how we are organized in Portugal in what respects the production of um, cartography and geographic information. So, um, 
all the, uh, uh, the central administration in Portugal is responsible for the production of cartography and geographic information in the entire Portugal. There are two exceptions, and these only two exceptions are Azores and Madeira. So that, that's why we call them the autonomous regions of Azores and Madeiras, and they are both islands. Uh, they, are, they have autonomy for the production of cartography and for the production of geographic information. All the other information is produced centrally in the continent or at the local level by the local municipalities. Regarding the INSPIRE implementation, we also have the same setup. So we have uh, my institution, the, the Director General for Territory. We coordinate the implementation of INSPIRE in Portugal. And uh, we have a steering committee, which is uh, uh, responsible for the strategic development of INSPIRE in Portugal, uh, where the autonomous region of Azores and Madeira are represented. The implementation of the directive in the autonomous regions are a responsibility of the, government, of the regional governments. And um, let me tell you, uh, uh, at this point, a, a slight difference between the, the central implementation of INSPIRE and the regional. In the continent, we are doing it, every, uh, the implementation is being uh, done at the central level. So we did not go to the local administration yet. However, in Azores, they already did this jump. And this is a major difference. So they, are, they already involve all the local administration um, in uh, Azores. Uh, but Anna will give you some details uh, on this. Um, one thing that it, it was very important for the successful implementation of the directive uh, in, in, in Azores was that after the transposition of the INSPIRE into the Portuguese law, in 2009, so three years after, the government of, of, of uh, the regional government of Azores decided to create a, a, le a legal instrument to implement the directive in the Azores Islands. And that was a very important step because it gave all the political support to the implementation of, of the directive. So um, I give now the floor to my colleague Anna that will give you some details of the implementation. Hello, everybody. So, in uh, regarding the Inspire implementation in Azores, in uh, we te uh, we took the the first steps in uh, 2009 um, with the the project uh, named Inspire Azores. Uh, with this this project, we have created uh, a working group dedicated to the project. Um, and through the, this, uh, um, this group, uh, we have worked in the technical specification of INSPIRE and uh, created an uh, INSPIRE data model for the Zores uh, region uh, that has adapted uh, um, to Azores all the specifications of uh, uh, INSPIRE. We also have created through this project into, into, in 2009 uh, a metadata manager that is called GIMA um, that uh, basically uh, um, um, uh, uh, helped us to publish and to create and publish uh, the metadata files in conformity to the inspired requirements. In 2012, uh, that was the year uh, when uh, we, ha we have adapted the directive to Azores, uh, we have created uh, through IDEA uh, a re our uh, STI, our regional STI, and, and also a tool uh, that is uh, uh, the metadata system of Azores, uh, that is directly connected to the uh, national system, uh, geographic, geographic information uh, system. Um, we also have created, uh, uh, by uh, through IDEA, uh, the regional automatic working groups dedicated to implement the directive. And uh, uh, through this, uh, uh, through IDEA, we also have uh, um, an active play uh, as m a member in the SNEEC steering committee. 
uh, talking a little bit about our regional groups, uh, working groups, uh, we are make, making uh, some analysis and simplification of the implementing Inspire, Inspire rules, uh, and also uh, with some brainstorming, uh, we are developing developing some uh, regional tools to make uh, and facilitate data harmonization. Uh, and we are trying to do all this uh, with some exchange of knowledge and uh, information between the different departments that uh, belongs to these groups. We also have, as Mar Mario uh, has told before, um, in this group, we have uh, also the local authorities involved, um, but uh, the main actors are the, the regional service of the, the, the Zurian government. Uh, we also have in the region a coordination group uh, that leads all the actions needed uh, for the compliance of the legal requirements for the INSPIRE. So now I'm giving the word to Mario. Okay, so let's look at the, the results, so where we are now. So here we have uh, to call the, the, the most important indicators on Inspire implementation, so the number of data sets and then the percentage of data sets that have metadata, that have visualiz visualization uh, view services, download services, and the, the ones that have Inspire model. We have two columns. One for the entire Portugal, so we have the Portuguese flag, and the other one is just for the autonom autonomous region of Açores. So, when we look at Portugal, uh, we have, so we have special data sets for continent, for Açores, and for Madeira. So it, may, it makes sense that at the entire member state level, the number of data sets is uh, three times the number of data sets we have in Açores because we should have all the, the, all the themes of Inspire, we should have them at the continent, at Madeira, and the source. And if we look at the number of data sets, this is more or less the case. We have around 500 data sets um, uh, uh, in, uh, in a source, and in, in the entire Portugal we have 1,300. So, of course, in metadata, like many other member states, we are very good. We have 100% of all the, our data sets have metadata. Regarding the services, and now we are not in 100%, we should be. Um, we, of course, the view services are much better. We have 70% and the download service only 25. I want to tell you that, uh, of course, we, will, uh, uh, um, we still have, uh, we did not fulfill the, the, the goal yet, but the year before, so this respects 2016 monitoring, the year before uh, we only had around um, uh, around 15% uh, of the services were in view services and only 4% in download. So in the last year, there was a huge increase of data sets available in the, in the services. And this also tells us, this slide, that in Azores, they, they, they are very successful, they are a huge contribution for these uh, good indicators at the continent level. So you can see that they are in average, for example, the view service and download service is more or less the same percentage at the Azores level and, uh, and uh, at the continent uh, level. So, when we look at the benefits um, of Inspire, and um, of course that for me, the most important benefits of Inspire in this moment in time is the organization of data, the, 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 the communication between the data producers. So this is a major achievement. To have all the data in metadata, to have most of the data in services, this is a huge achievement in Europe. And you can never forget that. Now, let's look at some other important achievements. The use of Inspire for environmental reporting. Uh, reporting. So here we have uh, different columns, um, and these columns relate to the environmental directive. So we have one column for water, another one for air, and so on. For each box, each box represents a directive. And in each box we have uh, uh, two little boxes painted with green or red. One box relates to the entire, to the continent, another one to the Azores. And why, the reason why I'm, I'm, we are showing this here is that, so green means that we are already establishing the linkage between the Inspire Directive and the Environmental Directive. For example, when we look at the nature directives, we can see that both at the continent and 
and, uh, and Azores, in the two directives on nature, we are already established the linkage between the data sets, between the, the, the linkage with the directive, with the INSPIRE directive. But if we look, for example, to waste, in the three directives, we still did not establish the link. So there is a huge uh, way to go on defining the data, the, the data sets required for environmental reporting. But we are doing our own way. Now I pass to Anna to uh, talk about other benefits. So in the Azores, um, the, the, the most important benefits that we can in identify was the identification of the regional key actors in, uh, in, in, in these uh, matters. Um, we also uh, could uh, have now a better knowledge of the um, geographical information that is produced in the Azores. Uh, and also, uh, uh, now we can know what is the availability of the existing data sets and service in the, our region. Um, uh, we also can uh, um, can uh, with the other another benefit of uh, Inspire in the source was the the exchange of uh, information between different departments and service uh, because before the directive it was very hard to have this uh, uh, this uh, this uh, exchange of information and also uh, the adoption of common rules and principles uh, by the regional uh, community uh, uh, um, was also a strong benefit from uh, inspired implementation so with these benefits um, we can uh, have a better uh, a better vision and support on the areas of the territori territorial and environmental uh, management, uh, which also gives a great support to our uh, regional policies in the, the definition and the implementation. Of course, that when we go um, at the same time that we want to work at the government and the environmental dimensions of the INSPIRE Directive, right now we are still struggling with important issues of the INSPIRE Directive implementation. We still have view service and download service to create, and we still need to harmonize our data. So right now, these are our, these, these are our main problems. And the challenge that we have uh, now in uh, Azores um, one of it is uh, we are trying uh, to increase the involvement of the local authorities. We have uh, uh, them already on the, the regional working groups, but uh, it's not working the way that we need uh, and uh, to fulfill all the inspired uh, requirements. So uh, our uh, um, challenge is to create a working group for the local authorities in the Azores, um, just because uh, that we think that uh, is going to work very well, because they have the same interests and uh, they have a small geographic uh, dimension and also they have the same responsibilities uh, uh, about the special uh, data teams of uh, INSPIRE. Another challenge that we are trying to, to achieve is to increase the, sorry, is to increase, uh, increase the number of the regional entities that are involved in INSPIRE, in Azores, uh, and uh, we think that we can reach this uh, with the, the direct support of our team, the team of IDEA, um, and uh, with the, also with the support of, the, uh, of some tools and projects, some e-government e tools and projects that we are developing. Um, and with this, we think that uh, with this involvement, we hope that we can reach some uh, creative solutions. So, um, that's uh, our message from Azores. Thank you for your attention. Well, 
Thank you, Anna and Mario. I think in the Osiris, I see that is a real success story, but you can still name the challenges. We haven't got much time to go deeper into this. Yes. Thank you very much. Uh, we pass over to the last presentation to Frabis Frung from Brittany. Brittany. Yeah, thank you very much for uh, inviting us. So I will try to make it quick. <laughs> So let me introduce you Brittany. It lies in the western part of Europe and France. <coughs> Five seconds for the postcard if you want to visit us next summer. And we'll switch quickly to the GIS view, which is less appealing. So we have here 1,270 municipalities. You have, of course, groups, and then departments, and then region. Uh, at this level, department region, you have um, local authorities and also state administrations. A lot of different administrations, we are working at different levels. And of course, all of these administrations need data, are producing data, more or less. They may have a GIS, uh, they may have experts, or they may not. They all have Google Maps, but we don't want them to have Google Maps as a default solution. So uh, the main political target was to ensure territorial equality. Everyone has to access a minimum amount of data to do their job. And the second, as important, target is to understand each other. If any level has its own data, and comes to conclusion and share the conclusions without sharing the data, then we could have problems. Because precise data and regional uh, level data do not uh, lead to the same conclusion. So we have to read each other and uh, we have to share data. So we, have in, we are in 2007 and uh, a magical phrase came and we repeated that phrase very often. It is a little frightening. Inspire is coming. <laughs> so we used that and we had a target. We had a guideline. But we also had some strengths. And I think that in every region, you can find uh, those, um, those helps. We had sponsors, the state and, re and the region. Uh, with the political targets and mentioned before. There are skills everywhere, but they are scattered among the different administrations. And there are open data, early adopters or adopters, and they all can also help. So we designed a public authorities community, not an independent organization, but a community named GeoBotang. The GeoBotang values are not you will share this data, or you will uh, uh, build this data. This is share your data if you want to. But if you share the data, you must provide metadata, you must provide view and download services. And we will see together how to do that using the ANSPY guidelines. Of course, if you come in the community, you will have courses, you will free hosting for your data and so on. The main target is how we share data and not which data we will share. I will pass rapidly on this one to say that there is another community working like this. Uh, this is um, OpenStreetMap and uh, one thing interesting is that the high activity uh, areas of OpenStreetMap are also high activity areas uh, for sharing public data. Decision was made to build uh, software. I will not speak a lot about this open source project. I will emphasize on one thing. This uh, building a project and participating to an open source community for, for us, the solution to speak out of our boundaries. Well, we are working and focusing on a sp uh, particular territory, which is uh, Bretagne, but participating to this community named Georgestra, the software, we shared a lot with other territories, for example, this very region, uh, Grand Est, and we are 
sharing a lot of ideas and uh, eventually uh, softwares and uh, processes. And also foreign countries, and an expected country was Bolivia, and we also shared a lot of things with, uh, with Bolivia. So I will come to the, um, uh, the benefits. First, the official benefits, a number of data sets. You know this, this is uh, the point of uh, reporting. And we don't find it very uh, convenient to see uh, if we are sec have succeeded or not. One thing interesting is the number of the members, 120, that means 120 technicians uh, on the field, and 2,000, uh, 20,000 users. Thanks to Inspire and the web series, we know that we can expand the number of people that can view the, the data. Another thing is uh, the co-productions. People are working to measure to uh, working together to publish the, the data. So uh, they meet each other and they want to do things. Things are common auto imagery, uh, sharing a watershed services, for example, and many things uh, beyond. Uh, we built data, specific data, because they were a community. Hello, this is interesting. First, we thought that uh, Inspire was like open data and that dozens of people will design mobile applications for free uh, based on our data. And then we discovered this tweet. Thanks to Geopotang, I can use data produced by the office next door. Open data is magic. This is very interesting because it explains that the first changes are inside and not outside on mobile apps and so on. Uh, it's explained that during Inspire, we are designing interfaces and that we are putting interfaces in the bureau, in the office next door. And this uh, is an immediate reward for the organization uh, sharing its data. Second effect, we thought that uh, Inspire was a kind of GIS 2.0. But this is not the case because the people of GRS want to keep their own data and uh, very efficient software. But instead of this, as I said before, we have lots more users. Here you can see an application, dedicated application, to compute agricultural spreading of fertilizers. And this application is entirely built on uh, inspired data and it is targeted for farmers they will uh, use directly this, uh, this application. So this is not a GIS. This is a um, specific application, and we expect a lot of applications like this. And then we discover that uh, users have specific needs, and they don't care about Inspire or not Inspire. So we have to build bridges between Inspire and other things. We can uh, see here teledetection, but I could also uh, say public sector information in general, and especially uh, and PDF uh, documents, uh, notes, and so on. And we have to bind this all together. So we have a new way to uh, fulfill uh, the, the needs now. We consider that Inspire and Open Data is um, established. We are co-designing applications with the uh, with end users. That's our real job now. And we are counting on expert organizations to deliver processing service, advanced service, through open data uh, to design those applications. We hope to produce a lot more applications with this scheme. So we'll say uh, that Inspire first gain was working together Second, expand geoformation to more people, more publics. Third, it was a money server because uh, people are working each other and they are doing things together. Uh, second, most important thing, it was a first step for digital transformation. And now we are using Inspire Experience, uh, our Inspire Experience to test other things in other domains. And third, it sets up a layer of services 
towards innovation. We cannot decide the innovation for the innovation we will do, but we expect other people to develop things over this layer. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much, Fabrice, for, for, uh, for your very inspiring contribution. And I think uh, with your presentation, we did not just look back, we look forward into the new digital world. And I think that uh, something uh, we have to uh, see as a big challenge for Inspire, but you clearly see Inspire as a chance uh, for this process. We are at the end of the presentations and we are almost at the end of our plenary time and you might be worried uh, what happens with lunch. <laughs> I think we shouldn't go into a big discussion. Um, I think we had very, very impressive presentations and I personally learned a lot about you know, how Inspire implementation uh, can be done on regional level. I could understand that things uh, yeah, are happening very differently, but I also understood that without the regional level, Inspire implementation would be zero at the end. So uh, I think already the presentation was a big contribution. So I'm going to cut down now uh, the discussion for a quick question and answer session. Um, I'd like at least to ask each of one of you uh, questions. And my first question, uh, well, following the theme of this plenary will be to Anna and maybe also to look. Maybe ladies first then. What are the benefits of Inspire from a regional perspective? It is totally enough if you say your main benefit and you say, that is my opinion. <laughs> so, um, in our reality in the Azores, uh, I think that uh, the main uh, benefits was the involvement and proximity of the regional entities. Um, so before the INSPIRE, it was difficult to know who was working with the information and it was much more difficult to reach the, the entities. So I think that INSPIRE has, uh, con has uh, given a, a huge contribute and we are benefit, uh, uh, having a, a huge benefit um, by the involvement and proximity uh, of the, the, um, all the, the, the community that works with the geographic information. Also, uh, and very important, uh, was the, is the adoption of common rules uh, given by the, the INSPIRE directive. Uh, which makes uh, much more easier uh, to um, manage and use the information and uh, also creates a better support on the definition and implementation of our regional policies, uh, which is also facilitated obviously, uh, naturally um, in the case of the Azores um, by our uh, administrative uh, autonomy. So, um, mostly um, the, the, the big benefits are these. Thank you very much. Uh, you couldn't keep it short because there are so many benefits, so that's good. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, have you got anything to add, Luke? Yeah, maybe as, a, as to, from the view from a, an international region, it was not so much the, the efforts that we had to put in to get everybody to use Inspire, but we really benefited from the presence of Inspire within the different member states of the Commission, because there was already some sort of a discipline uh, present uh, by, for creating the data sets that we were then using uh, to create the, the, the common river sets. Although there were still inconsistencies, but because the Inspire gave the people, the experts, a common language and common, a common framework in which they should prepare their data, it was, I think, much easier to put them then together at the, at the end. So I think that, that was one of the major benefits and uh, a benefit perhaps in the future could be that the products that have then been created on an international basis can also be used more frequently because they also are then created 
in the same framework of Inspire, and so basically somebody who is then working with it has the ability to, to quickly comprehend what has been done and, and, and what the data are for and how, how he can work with them. Yeah, we see with these two opinions that I think the conditions, the regional conditions are very different. Uh, if there is something, you have a complete different approach to uh, a situation where you have to build up something new. And uh, so that clearly shows uh, the difference. Inspire cannot just be implemented with a recipe. That's how you do it. You have to understand your own conditions and adapt it. So thank you. I come to my second question. Uh, what could Inspire do better? What would you want to change in the Inspire process to make it better work, if necessary? <laughs> this question goes to uh, Fabrice and to Mario. So Fabrice, will you start? Yes, sure. Uh, to answer this question, I know that uh, lots of people will go on simplifications or won't go on simplification, uh, because uh, I think that um, uh, you cannot have on the European scale uh, services directly usable by, by people. Uh, you must have a, some kind of complex service. Several countries is difficult. No, I will emphasize on communities. Uh, we need in Inspire to share more our discoveries, our ideas, uh, our, um, our solutions. Uh, this is perhaps happening uh, between states. This is difficult between regional levels. So we need uh, a place to uh, share our experiences because the ideas are as important as, as the rules. Uh, this is, for me, what could make, make um, Inspire better today. Thank you. Uh, Mario, what do you think about it? Okay, I'm not going to use simplification either, um, because I think uh, Inspire is complex and it should be complex, period. Complexity is needed in the beginning of the process. So, of course, data structure is complex, so I don't see any other way to do it. Of course, we can maybe improve the way how we communicate with people, but we, we have to face it. Uh, organization, data structure is complex, so I think we have to deal with it. Um, what wish, what could we change? I think um, we have regulated the, the creation of Inspire. And sometimes I wonder if we should now regulate the use of, of data created by Inspire. What could the European Commission level, or even at the national level, could we have legislation, for example, in the environment, I think in some cases it already happens, in the environmental legislation or in the government legislation, can we have specific laws that oblige the, the public administration to use metadata, to use the services, so that, for example, the environmental reporting that we can only use the information that it's already in a, view, in a, in a, in a, in a form of a service, can we do that? I think in the beginning of, you know, when we are doing something new, I think in the beginning you really have to impose your novelty. Of course, yeah, you know, the, 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 I, I think that we will only succeed on Inspire when no one will talk on Inspire. So we, when Inspire becomes invisible, that's when I think we succeeded. But I think we still have a, a way to go. Um, another thing we should, imp another thing we, we, I think we should improve is how we look to the outside. I think the geoport, the European geoportal, the, the national, the Portuguese national geoportal, is they are not good. We need, we need. It's very difficult to find the data. If I go to the, the, the European geoportal, I just cannot find the data I want, and this is very bad. Our metadata, the way how we organize our data, the, the metadata process was very important in the beginning. So we have most of our data organized, but do the metadata we have now, do they fulfill our needs? Can I use our metadata to look the data I want? I think we need to improve um, this process a little bit. And data sharing. Uh, I think uh, the environmental community is very good on data sharing. I think it's because environmental data is new, and so the people that are working on this data is also new. But when we go into the reference data, I'm from a mapping agency, by the way. But when we look 
If you go with the reference data, it's very difficult to share the information. We have a huge cultural problem because we were using the past to sell the data. Our, sometimes our, the way how we, the, the mapping agencies impose themselves, it's because they, all, all the people need our data. We sell the data, so we have a lot of power. So a lot of people still think that data is power, and so we sell it. We need to reinvent ourselves. And I'm talking now to all the mapping agencies. We need to open the data. Uh, otherwise, Inspire will not succeed. We need to find different ways. Thank you. OK, that's it. Thank you. Well, we could all hear, all hear that was a strong message, and everybody agrees. <laughs> Uh, I didn't hear so much applause when you said uh, complexity is fine. <laughs> but uh, no, 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 <laughs> no, no, not there. No, but I think uh, it is important to discuss that. You know, where can we simplify and where we, can we not simplify? So I think that is a serious discussion. Also, for my last words, I actually wanted to say one of the key words is simplicity. So you gave a different opinion. Thank you very much for that. Uh, we're running out of time. Uh, we started a bit later, but I'd like to finish more or less after 90 minutes. So I come to the last question. Um, we celebrate the 10th anniversary or birthday of Inspire. In your opinion, who will use Inspire data and services in 10 years' time? In 2027, where will Inspire stand in another 10 years from now on? We have Hilma left and Margarita left, and I would say ladies first. Uh, I hope it will be used in schools. I would like that children learn how is the territory. For example, flying with a 3D uh, visual uh, flight, and they know how we are the rivers, the villages, and the characteristics of the soil, and the ter temperature, everything with the SDI. Uh, I will that uh, it will be used in the universities because they are the the future um, professionals, and they use it for planning projects to locate phenomena and deal different variables. Of course, for professionals uh, that they know how to to increase the servers in the SDI and use the ones that they have and to know how to deal with that information with, of course, free software. Uh, administrations uh, that they will have um, specific applications for their needs, um, and they use it, the SDI as a normal tool for their jobs. Of course, for doing this, it's necessary to make friendly the aspect on how to use the SDI to develop the tools to make an easy and local, the local producers to make easier for them to georeference the information, to make the metadata, to publish. Um, it, it doesn't matter if they are going to be with the support of the regional uh, node, but uh, at least to make the metadata and georeference the information is important to obtain that and to be closer to the people. Um, perhaps explaining to different um, sectors of the population what they can, uh, which profits they can have using SDI to explain to the, to the, to the teachers, to the investigators, to different, no? especially for them. And how do I imagine in the future? I continue, I imagine, of course, I've continued basic cartographic map of Europe, eh, of course, interoperable, with lots of information associated with eh, in everywhere. Eh, I imagine data sets intercommunicating, making easily the global decisions. The, the, I imagine unification in the portals uh, to have a general um, way to access the, the data in different countries. So if you go to one SDI to another, you more or less are you going to know where to, access or where to find that. Um, I imagine the project outside Europe, of course, is, go, is happening, but I think metadata is in global, everything, something more global. And for me, the most important is that the fundamental, the fundamental 
and something inspired that I'm sharing, collaboration, protections, we really come to our hearts to look after mm, the planet and all the beings that live on it. That's my opinion. Thank you very much. Homer, what do you have to add? Yeah, not easy to add uh, a lot, but I uh, would like to maybe even extend the scope of application of Inspire a little and get back to the term I'd like, uh, I tried to introduce in, in my brief presentation, the geo-governance. Um, the first field uh, I'd like to see in 10 years' time is that we apply Inspire in the context of um, geodata and socio-spatial so, uh, data to monitor the cohesion in Europe and to direct the investments to those areas where we are in danger to lose the socio-economic coherence. Uh, my um, experience as a spatial planner is that the decision in a city parliament, in a regional parliament, in a state, in a federal parliament, do not care much about the direction of their investments um, uh, being in line with socio-economic requirements. And uh, we need to clarify on this uh, and direct our resources to those spots where investments are required and I believe that socio-spatial data helps in doing so and monitoring budgets also helps uh, in doing so. Inspire and the uh, geodata uh, directed towards this purpose might serve a lot to maintain coherence in Europe. The second field goes even beyond the European boundaries and Margarita also mentioned um, the geo context. I believe that if we want uh, to maintain our livelihood in Europe, uh, we need to improve livelihood in Europe uh, beyond Europe, that is specifically uh, Northern and Western Africa, and Central Africa probably as well. And um, I, th I could imagine that the organization of African states applies a um, framework of uh, name it inspire or a kind of African inspire to monitor needs of intervention uh, in infrastructure, socio-economic, health level whatsoever to make livelihood in those states better where uh, the today's come from and uh, to direct investments to the right spot at the right time um, for the right needs is something where uh, the relevance of geodata uh, has not been expanded yet sufficiently from my point of view, and this might strengthen this term of geo-governance, which I tried to introduce. Thank you. Thank you very much. I think the last question was a nice end uh, for this session because we looked into the future and we could see there are clear visions of INSPIRE, clear visions in more cooperation, uh, more visions in going outside Europe and also using GI for the problems we have to face in the next 10 years. And I think if I would say anything now about a conclusion, it would be too much. I think we all want to go uh, into the land branch. So thanks again for all the presenters here and for your very good presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good lunch. Very nice to meet you.